dare you join forces in the fight against chaos. The end times are near. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. This is the Friday Fantasy Show and this is an interview with Liam Cullen of Pachang Games. And we've got a very special interview here because yesterday they launched their new game which is, what's it called? Uh, Warhammer Quest 2 The End Times. Warhammer Quest 2 The End Times. And tell me about that, you've been working on that for how long now? Uh, we've been working on it for what, about a year now. About a year. Yeah, yeah. so it's a turn-based strategy game based on the old Games Workshop board game. Right, okay. Um, and we've, it's like a spiritual successor to the last digital version uh, okay. that came out a few years ago now. So, and, and that was, um, was that, so how, how does it differ from that one, do you know? Uh, did you play that last one? Yes, I did. <laughs> I actually worked a little bit on the last one. Oh, did uh, you? A tiny bit. Um, yeah. And okay. uh, we're a, a small team. There's four of us working on it in development. Yeah. Um, and one of the other people, um, Ben, is the other artist on the team, okay. uh, worked on the other title, the other Warhammer Quest game. Okay, um, thanks. So he's kind of built this as a spiritual success. Yeah, yeah, the so he's one. carried on that sort yes. of deed or something. Yeah. And so uh, tell me, how does it happen? So your Pachang Games, is it, is it games or just Pachang? Just Pachang, Okay. Yeah. Look, I didn't do my research, <laughs> did I? Um, I never do research. <laughs> and so how did you get involved with Warhammer, though? Because it's the sort of thing you just bowl up and say, hey, we want to make a Warhammer Quest game. Uh, a little bit like that, to be honest. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> so. But Chang itself is a fairly new company, okay. quite small, and it's formed by um, Ben, who had previously worked with Games Workshop, uh, and Pete, who I'd worked with uh, previously at another larger studio. Right. Uh, and they got together, uh, mainly just to see if they could work together without killing each other, on a little <laughs> puzzle game called Pachang, which is where the, like, the company li- came from. A little bit like me and Julia. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Probably more successfully. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, hello, hello, cheeky. Because hello. Yeah, hello. Um, that got to number one, didn't it? That did, yeah, yeah. that did really well. Um, just kind of off its own back. There was no real marketing push yeah. or anything. Word of mouth. Yep. Yeah. Um, it did really well, so they knew that they wanted to work together again, right. do something a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as they'd had previous experience working with Games Workshop, that was a possible right. avenue. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Games Workshop were quite keen to do another Warhammer Quest. Yeah. As it happened, um, just seemed to coincide with them wanting to release a new physical board game yes. copy. Um, yes. And so the timings just kind of came together it, perfectly, it just, and I it came on board. It was faked, yeah, I came on board. Yeah. Uh, and another chap called Juan to help out on the coding side, and we just kind of got on with it. So what what part do you do then? What what do you actually do? So my main uh, role has been working on the characters uh, on okay. this one. So you've been doing all the character design? Yes, yeah. So one of the out. nice things working with Games Workshop is obviously they've got fairly well-established IPs. That is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And design. So it's kind of taking those, working those into 3D, uh, and also putting our own little spin on them as well, because we're uh, setting this game in the end times, which yes. is... Uh, Tell us about that, because for me, I've never really got into Warhammer, to my you know hot, uh, shock horror, um, but I've always been curious about it, because when I was a kid, I really liked the little miniatures. I had no idea what they were for or what you did with them, <laughs> but I just liked the fact that they were fantasy and sculpted. They looked really cool. And obviously it's a war game where you measure stuff out and stuff like that. Anyway, so yeah. I've, I have no idea. So within the universe, so they've got a whole mythology, haven't they? So they do, the end yes. times, where does that fit in? The whole so thing? the end times, there's kind of three key stages of the fantasy side of Warhammer. Okay. Um, so just within the Warhammer universe itself, there are two main divides. So there's the fantasy side, and there's the science fiction side, which is yes. the. 40,000 universe with the space yeah. marines that people have probably seen. Yeah. But this yeah. is kind of in the, the precursor. That's the, the fantasy, fantasy side yes. of it. Excellent. Uh, and within that, there was uh, the traditional fantasy side, which you probably saw, which is yeah. called the Old World, um, which ran for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, and now that's been updated to uh, something called the Age of Sigma. Yes. I which is their current their current line. So yes, yeah, um, yeah. they got rid of uh, some of the old classes and old characters, right. introduced a load of new heroes, uh, kind of moved the timeline on as well. Uh, but in between the two, 
there's a say. little period called the end times, ah. which is where everything kind of uh, falls apart. Chaos. Chaos, Chaos. essentially, Chaos. yes. So tell us exactly about the game then. What is it? One player? Can you play it with your friends online? What so platform is it? Currently, it's single player. Okay. Um, so it's out on iOS devices, so uh, iPhone and iPad. Uh, we will be releasing on Android and PC and possibly even console Ooh. later dates. Xbox. Xbox, Come hopefully, on. yes. That's yeah. what I've got. That's yeah, exactly, yeah, <laughs> me too, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we are potentially looking at updating to some multiplayer action later on. But Brilliant. for the now, yeah. it's single player. player. Yeah, so you guide your little team of characters, your yep. little band of heroes, through a series of different dungeons and quests. Um, ultimately, your kind of been given this task to find a relic to help the Emperor uh, in his battle against Chaos and so you go off in your merry little way, meet new heroes and characters as you go along. So what sort of type of game is it then? Is it top down looking through stuff as in, you know, like, uh, what have I just been playing recently? Uh, oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> I remember been playing something that isometric view down, top down, that sort of thing? Oh, or is it first well, person? What we've actually is done, uh, so the first uh, iteration of Warhammer Quest on um, the iPhone was just top down. Right. So what we've actually done now is we've made it fully 3D, so you can Ooh. rotate the camera, zoom in and out, which is why ah, the character work has cool. been um, you know, a bit more intensive this time around because you've right. been able to pan around the, all yeah, the characters yeah. moving in and out. So it is a bit more like actually playing the board game where you can lean over and move right. in and out. It also opens up the gameplay possibilities a bit more because you yeah. can explore the cover and shoot under things and we're allowed to have right. things hanging over the characters now. So so is it is it an out and out shooter game? No, it's Is there puzzles in it? What it's um so it's classed as a turn based strategy. Oh. Uh in the same way the board game works. That's a divinity. Yes, yes, yeah, very That's much. That's what so. I've playing, yeah. Yeah. So it's right, now I know where we're going with it. Yes. Yeah. It's good to do research, isn't it? You know. <laughs> and find out what's going on. But I thought the whole point of an interview is that you work and find out with yeah. the audience. You grow as yeah, a person. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've not played it yet. No, I'm no, like, oh, no, oh, yeah, that's true. Exactly. So, all right, yes. cool, so, so it's that turn-based and then presumably you can power up. How, how does your character work? So you will, uh, you start off uh, with two characters uh, that have started this quest initially, but your party will grow to four yep. as you go along and you'll recruit new people. Um, and then as the game progresses, you can recruit new people at taverns um, and maybe win some to join your side. Yes, through quests. <laughs> uh, so you can level up individual characters um, or you can recruit new ones to your team and you can okay. switch people in and out. So another thing that we've done uh, with this one compared to the previous one is that you can um, kind of have your party made up of whoever you like. Whereas previously right. you could only have one of each class. Ah, okay. Whereas yeah. now, if you want four guys yeah. with massive swords, you exactly. can do that. If you want four dark elf sorceresses, yeah. you can do that. So you can tailor four, your own party. Four gnomes. For, uh, for dwarfs. Dwarfs, that's it. Four yes. little dwarfs yeah. running around. Yeah. You do want that. I think that's a good. I think that's a great choice. Yes. Because I don't want to be restricted about who I could have in, and I always have to have a wizard or either. Exactly. Yes. I'd want a yeah. complete free for all. You know, yeah. a group of wizards going around. Okay, you might not be brilliant at the fighting bit, but then you might go, well, actually, I just prefer casting spells. All yeah. The time. Maybe you keep yeah. your distance a little bit more. Yeah. You use yeah, area yeah. of effect spells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of the other nice things is that because we're set in the end time that there are some very uneasy alliances made between mm. parties that wouldn't normally be together. Everyone's kind of grouped together to fight the Hordes of Chaos. So all the Dark Elves um, have come in and they're helping out the Empire as well. Right. Um, all the Dwarves and even the Undead as well are in there too, what? which normally you wouldn't... Uh, you wouldn't want them well, as allies, No, would exactly. You? So now you can have a... You know, a vampiric blood knight with your empire captains. That sounds dwarves. cool. <laughs> yeah, it really changes gameplay a little bit. So presumably you've play tested it and you've had good feedback from people. Yes, yeah, yeah it's gone really well, which is always good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it's been very positive uh, and we've been cleared obviously by Games Workshop as well. They were very happy with it as well, which is great because they're they yeah. put a lot of pride in, yeah, their, in their IP, so the fact that yeah. they've got their seal of approval. Well, I played well. the the, uh, the card game. Yes. And I really thought it was a fantastic game. You know, that yeah. was by Fancy Flight, but obviously Games Workshop presumably have some sort of say. Yes. They must have to sign yeah, even Fancy license. Flight. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and I just thought the quality of it, the quality of the cards were excellent. The actual, they really thought about the game. It wasn't just, oh, we've got this brand, let's just, you know, do, do like a yeah. cheap version and we'll just, you know, the cash cow and make money out of it. It seems like they really think about it. So that's, uh, yeah, and that's good to know that they're kind of over your shoulder yes. checking because obviously it's the first time you've worked. On, on that brand then, in that case. Yeah, you know, uh, and they've been company. fantastic to work with as well. They've got right. a, um, a licensing team right. who deal with yeah. us directly. So yeah. uh, as an artist on the project, I will work directly with them. I'll send them ideas. They'll give feedback on those. And we'll kind of go yeah, back and yeah. forth. So there's a sign off process on yeah. every character and every yeah. weapon that we do. And have you enjoyed it? Have you I enjoyed have. Work on it? Yes. Because I always think that you know, <laughs> if you're not enjoying this sort of stuff, you're in the wrong game. You know. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, yeah. it's um, it's had its own challenges, um, particularly with a small team. Um, yeah, yeah. And a much shorter production window than a lot of projects I've worked on. Right. Um, but it's been great, and even working on um, something that's already so well established. Yeah. Uh, we have had a lot of freedom to kind of put our own little mark on it as well. I think that's very clever against Workshop because otherwise things become stale. And yes, that, that's yeah. why you would need to sort of go, well, actually, let's phase out an old, you know, and, and bring in new characters because mm. you've got to keep updating it because people want that. You know, as a fan, yes. you'd want that. You'd want, you, oh, look at this, there's a new Chaos Warrior or there's a new whatever. Yeah. You know, and you, you'd want that. So it's great that they're, they're realising that, yeah, you're, they, they, they're not just getting you to do what they want you're coming to the table with ideas and fresh ideas as yes, well. Yeah. So I think that's what, and that's the only way it can really work in the future. Talking of the future, not that I've got a time machine, wish I had, maybe I have, maybe I haven't, who knows? Julian, can we work on one? No, he's just shaking that's his head. He doesn't want to work on a time machine. Anyway, what I was gonna say is, I know it's only just come out, are there any plans in talks for another one? Is this a little exclusive? Well, Trying to wangle something. Uh, this is something that we are actually <laughs> talking about at the moment. So currently uh, we're releasing the main game and we will be supporting it for the next year or, or more. Yeah. Depending yeah. how it goes. So there will be updates. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Whole new areas of maps to unlock uh, yeah, new cool. characters, new weapons and things. So yeah, the game will keep growing. Um, Excellent. In terms of the company, we're yeah we're having a look to, mm, to see what right. there is. See what um, yeah, done. there are a few possibilities out there, but um, That's good. yeah, That's early exciting. days. Yeah. And what was what was your favourite character to work on then? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think probably uh, it's actually one of the last ones that did, um, which was the dwarf troll slayer. Um, dwarf troll slayer. <laughs> and normally I'm not that into dwarfs as a, a Warhammer race goes, right, but yeah. um, every character has their like main standard outfit okay. and then an alternative armor outfit. Ooh, they put on. So um, like it was quite nice coming up with those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess you, you know, you, you've gone into, I, I mean, trying to design something. It would be like, well, this has got to be practical, it can't just look nice. Yes. You've got to sort of think about that. Yeah. It's the whole, you know, when females used to be drawn and they were in scantily clad armour, and you think, well, they wouldn't go into battle like that, would they? That's just ridiculous. So presumably you've had to think about that as well. Yes, come up with that yeah. Too. And also, uh, and then take those back to Games Workshop yeah. and make sure they're kind of happy. Yeah, um, yeah. There were, like, one occasion where one of the characters we did was a dark elf sorceress. Mm -hmm. who's quite a staple of the, the Warhammer yeah. world. Yeah. Uh, and on our initial submission, the uh, feedback was uh, she was too modest. Too modest? So, uh, <laughs> oh, hello. But uh, in their defence, the, the males of the... Uh, oh, they're the, always... They're, they're, yes, this yeah. particular race yeah. is quite scantily so, clad, so it, it fits in with yeah. the culture. I guess you've got so, some yeah. tribes, you know, that yes. hundreds of years ago, that that's what they would be wearing, wouldn't they? Just yes. wearing cloths yeah. and they would go out like and that. And that's kind of juxtaposed yeah. by, yeah, our female yeah. wood elf. Yeah. Archer, who's in there, who is uh, pretty much head to toe clad in, in yeah. full garb. Well, that's good, yeah, as long as it's equal and it's not just they're all like that. Yes. I think that, that would yeah. be a bit of a problem. No, but that sounds really cool. And so, here's a little bit of a cheeky question. Um, is there anything unique about your game as opposed to the other? Uh, okay, so I think probably the, the biggest thing that we've done with this is we've introduced an action points system. Uh, okay. The gameplay, which is a yeah. little bit different to the previous Warhammer games and also other turn-based strategies out there. So okay. with this, um, each character has a set amount of action points that they can use on their turn and you use these for both moving and for combat. Right. So it's up okay. to you as a player to decide whether you want to kind of use all your points attacking or if you want to 
uh, move and attack, or if you just want to flee right. outright. Yeah, yeah. That's always the best option, isn't it? Running away. That's, <laughs> that's what you've got to do. Isn't it? No, so, yeah, so I could sort of think, well, I don't need to move because I'm already in the thick of it, and yep. therefore I'm just going to use all my points on doing two or three spells. Or And can you mix it up in terms of doing uh, movement, cast a spell or attack, and then move back again as long as you've got enough Yes, action yeah, points. you're yeah. free to spend these points yeah. kind of as you see fit. Yeah. So, yeah, we're breaking away from that traditional kind of move and movement phase, attack and right. attack phase. Yeah, so yeah. you can really bounce it out. And switch between characters as well. So you can ah. move a character to create line of sight, attack with, say, an archer behind, and then move and then the guy move back, back again yeah. and attack with him. So you don't have to finish doing everything within that character? No, you've got, your, it's ah, your turn. that's really cool. Use up all your action yeah. points if you want to for all your characters in any order, ah. and then... And I, I would imagine that gives a real fluidity, there's a big word, <laughs> uh, well, big for me anyway, um, to the game, because it feels like you're just dipping in and out each character. Cause yeah. you, you, and also, I guess, depending on what the enemies are doing, you may need to quickly on the hoof change what you were just about to do. Exactly, yes, yeah. yeah. So it gives you a bit more freedom to respond to what's going on yeah. um, and work your characters kind of as a team yeah, rather than yeah. as individuals. Now that sounds really good. Well, there you go. So just as a last little point, so it's out now. Where can, yes. where can everybody get it? Uh, it's out now on the App Store, um, cool. Apple, so uh, on iPhone and iPad. Brilliant, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Let's do a formal handshake. Thank you. Always like to do that, eh? <laughs> Why not? Thank you. Hopefully you've enjoyed that at home, fellow imps. We've, uh, it's been a pleasure, Liam. Thanks for coming in. And yes, remember, it is out now. And remember to keep it unreal, especially if you like playing Warhammer Quest 2, the end game. No, what's it called? The, the end, end times. times. <laughs> I knew I'd pull that out. Cut. <laughs>